everyone, welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on with our locomotion and our basic maneuvering around the world. Uh, now I have set all this up, it took me a while to get my head around but it is now working. You can see we can move forward and backwards like we could in the last episode. But I've now set it up that we can kind of turn around to face a direction that we want to move in. I've also set up now as well that we can run around a bit more freely. Uh, I've also set up that if you hit the sprint button, but you walk backwards, it stops the sprint, but you can then move back on. So it makes the maneuvering a little bit more fluid um, as we kind of move around the level. Uh, you still got that kind of Resident Evil classic feel um, in the way that it forces you to kind of stop sprinting to kind of get a better angle to maneuver so you're kind of having to stop and things like that if we're turning we can't obviously sprint so you have to hit that sprint button after you actually start moving so that kind of also limits you in ways um, but I do, I do feel it's not as terrible um, as the kind of original Resident Evil controls so it's kind of slightly like an upgraded classic Resident Evil feel if you like uh, now this was very very kind of complicated for me um, to get my head around so I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible but I probably won't it, it's like a non tutorial tutorial because I'm just going to show you what I did basically uh, and hopefully you'll get the same results so for the locomotion so in our idle where we set up the turn right and turn left what I've done is now using Mixamo animations um, I've just plugged them straight in there's no need to add any kind of extra stuff in there like speed or direction or anything like that and in the uh, like the um, execute nodes I've just put in I've just created a new variable called turning left and turning right and to come out of it I've just put a not boolean so turning left not um, into this and the same for the right I've just put in a turning right not to come out of it and to go in it just uh, a normal turning right in the event graph all we have to do is um, set these values through our third, from our third person character. So going to our third person character, what I've done is I just created um, this turning right and turning left boolean. Ignore the rest of this. This is just where I'm kind of um, fixing things and stuff like that. Now this is what your normal input um, movement axis will look like. So when you're turning right and left this is what it will look like but it will just be for the turning right now I played with a lot of different things and I realized the solution to what I was looking for was already actually in our code and that was actually this which is our gamepad turning right and left so I basically copied this code and the add controller your input and I brought it down to here and I plugged it in and lo and behold it turned it started to basically do the spin now obviously I've added animations to this but you get the general idea it's rotating the camera on its axis um, so once that was already running I basically had what I wanted I just needed to kind of start to control the animation within it um, and I started playing around with it as best as I could and this is the, how I got my result so I created this um, is turning um, I realize I've put the wrong thing in there actually it should be for sprinting that should be sprinting is sprinting right and we want to know that we're not sprinting basically so we can start using these animations so it is turning, I'm not actually using, I, ne I never bothered to use it, it's not actually useful to me. Um, in the end, I, I was just using that to play around with stuff. So I'm basically checking to see if I'm sprinting. Now if I am sprinting, I'm not going to use the um, animations. Um, I tried to basically set up a blocker to stop the uh, animations and to stop the turning. But this sprinting, I tried to place it here, it doesn't really do much in the way of actually getting anywhere. But it does help being here. Um, then I run another branch to make sure we are actually stood still. To do that, get velocity, get the uh, vector length x and y, and then just make sure they're both equal so that it knows we're not actually moving anywhere before it actually plays an animation. Um, 
Off the true, we get a sequence because we want to check this for turning left and turning right. And I'm using this um, controller input that's uh, adding to our your input to get the result I'm looking for. Uh, so if we're turning right, we need to be checking that our axis is over 0 0.3. It will move to 1. So as long as it's over 0 0.3, it will play these animations and then you're just doing a, a true um, and then we're setting the turning right um, and making sure turning left is off um, because that's already set that when we let go it's going to make sure it turns the right back to off as well same for the left but we're doing minus 0.3 so it will always go to minus one so just a, a value of minus 0 0.3 is good enough to start kicking the uh, animations into place and again we're just doing the opposite we're making sure right is off we're making sure turning left is on and then when we stop everything we're making sure turning uh, left is also off off of this branch where we're not moving we're just if it's false we're just making sure both are, are turned off um, and basically going back to our anim bp where we will call these those two um, booleans and plug them in to set the animation booleans the turning right and turning left we set up in the animation blueprint so this is basically just driving whether it should play the animation or not. So all of the codes so turning is actually all happening within this, this very small bit here. But this is just driving when we play the animation or not. Uh, and that's it set up. That's basically it done. But I wanted to go ahead and add the sprint in. So like in Resident Evil, um, when you're sprinting, um, you can't really do a lot else, you know. So the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that the keys A and D aren't being pressed. I don't know why it's set up like this because you'd think if we get this is keyboard like here, um, it then runs into here and for some reason it only works when you're pulling off the true. My brain thought it would be the false but apparently not. Um, so yeah, I, I got those there, plug that in and if that's true, it goes off to the next thing and what it's checking is it's getting our move forward vector and it's just making sure we are moving forwards by at least 0 0.1. So as long as we're moving forward um, and we hit the sprint button, it will set our character walk speed, max walk speed to 400. Uh, and it'll set it true to sprinting. Obviously, when we release it, we just want to re remove, re return our max walk speed to 200 and set our sprinting to 0. Um, what's going on up here, so the whole walking backwards, if we're sprinting and we hit the backwards button, so we walk backwards, it basically is just always checking to see if that sprinting is true. If it is true, uh, it's making sure our get move forward vector is going below minus uh, 0 0.1. The reason for that, again, is, as I said, when you move backwards, it goes into the negative for the vector, or the axis, you say them. Um... So it's checking for that, and if we are moving backwards, um, it sets the walking speed to 200 while we are, and then again, if we then continue to sprint but move forward again, it resets it back to 400 for us. So that's driving our sprint, basically, and setting it up. But this is all I've done, and, and it's basically turned out um, pretty perfect. Um, again, as I said, there's, um, there's probably a few bugs that I want to get the kinks out of. Um, but ultimately, I actually really enjoy this turning speed. I think it's great, this little turning in place um, animation. It's not really useful to a lot of projects. It's definitely going to be a very niche thing that you guys will be looking for. But if you're setting up a very kind of old school Resident Evil style game, or like Manhunt, for example, this could really give you um, some, your players at least, um, something to get their head around. I, I, re, I actually refired at Resident Evil 1 the other day, and although and it was a lot worse than this, so getting around that factor was um, really, really hard uh, to get my head around. So, um, so yeah. As I said, there's still a few kinks there because I'm because I'm hitting the sprint button. It's obviously not playing the animations, but as soon as I set up the sprint. So maybe I need to check that velocity is... I don't know. Um, I need to work... As I said, there's still some kinks to it. So I'm, I'm still working on this, but to get it truly perfect. But for what, I, what it is so far that I've done, 
um, everything is there really it's just again clearing out those final um, few uh, little kinks in the code but ultimately this is how you kind of get to this point is just um, just a few little uh, sort of boolean changes really um, and you get this result and I, I honestly think for what it is it's quite good um, it, it makes me want to continue on this project even more um, and add even more to it but let me know if you want me to continue this if um, if you do hit that like button and the more likes it gets the more incentive I'll have to continue this project because you know I'm really enjoying it um, and the results really are um, quite exciting for myself at least um, but let me know how you guys get on hopefully uh, you enjoy this episode and, you, and, and someone finds it useful um, because the the thing with this is a lot of people do it with the mouse obviously I'm moving my mouse now and nothing happens because I've unplugged everything because I don't need it um, but most people would set this up with the mouse it's very similar code so you should be able to get this um, working in exactly the same manner it's just that you want to keep the mouse um, working with it instead of the uh, A and D buttons but Hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know in the comments. Leave a little like. And of course, as always, um, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. Uh, it's free to do. And you can always change your mind down the line. So thanks so much, guys. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.